Watching Gears, brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. You know, one question that we get a lot is, how do I do my own metal work on my project? And that's a really good question because not a lot of people are talking about it. And it's the one thing that virtually any project you find is going to need some metal work. Now, most people's thoughts of doing metal work means you got to have a big fancy shop and all kinds of expensive tools and gadgets. And that's a little bit of a misconception because obviously tools are great, but if you don't know how to use them, it doesn't matter what you got or how expensive it is. Matter of fact, metalworking doesn't take a lot of fancy tools. So today we're going to show you how to bump some metal using some basic bodyworking tools. Okay, the subject that we have here is a 1957 Jeep FC 150. Not only because it's super cool and super rare, but also because it has all the typical damage that you're going to find on a vintage vehicle. From the typical dents and damage and wrinkles, to rust holes and corrosion, to the classic bullet holes, <laughs> it's all here. All of which will eventually be repaired, but today we are going to focus on getting rid of dents and damage like this. Now, to remove virtually any dent, obviously, it needs to be pulled back out. And there's a couple different ways to do this. If you can get behind the damage, you can use a hammer and dolly to hammer it back out. If you can't get behind it, you'll have to use some sort of a slide hammer to get it out. But whichever way you go, the techniques are basically the same, and so was the goal. To remove the damage as quickly and easy as possible without making extra work for you. So the first thing you need to do is assess the damage and try to figure out what happened. Now why is this important? Because the best way to remove a dent is in the reverse order of how it happened. So a lot of you guys will look at this and go, oh man, this is easy, dude. It took a shot right there with the impact going kind of like this. Well, there's a lot of evidence that's showing it went this way. Here it is. You can see this is where our first impact started. Now we know that because you see this crease that goes all the way around? It goes around that dent. So this, this part was first. Might even have happened on another day. So your main impact then went right here and created all this. So this is your main impact area. And then this is your secondary impact area, all of this stuff. And these are your ridges and these are your valleys that happen in a dent where that metal does an accordion sort of thing and tries to figure out where to go. So your initial impact was here. This is your secondary impacts, and then your final dent was around here. So what we'll do is we'll start with a hammer and dolly on the outer perimeter and start working our way in here and fixing all this as we hammer it out. Now, something else that shows this impact was more this direction than this direction. You just see this high spot right here? And also notice how our door gap is closed at the top. So this has been pushed back. So we need to check our door gap. And if you'll notice, the door gap looks pretty good all the way around. So fortunately, it wasn't hit hard enough that it moved the whole door jam because we'd have to fix that too. Okay, we know what happened, we know how it happened, and we know how to fix it. So we're going to get this headlight off, so give us room to work and we're going to get busy. Now, as I mentioned before, my main attention at first will be around the perimeter of the damage and without a doubt, the biggest challenge to hammer and dolly work is getting the proper access to the panel. Now, a lot of time, tight working space will require the creative use of an extended hammer and pry bars to try and reach into the corners and place your hits where you want them. The going is slow because of the lack of space for good hammer swings, but we're making progress as the metal starts to slowly move back in the right direction. Also, as the shape of the panel changes, you're going to want to alter your body dollies as well to try to match the contour of the body. Now, to reach all the way into a corner is always a challenge, and usually is where you'll need to pull out a slide hammer or other pulling tool. But, we had one other option before resorting to that. These body forming punches are designed to allow you to reach into damage areas in tight places, and they work. But to get enough striking power on the punch required more creative use of a sledgehammer head. And that's the challenge to bumping metal. Sometimes you gotta get creative to make it happen. 
Once the panel starts to move back into its original shape around the edges and in the middle, we can start focusing on working out the ridges and the valleys in the center. And this requires hammering on and off dolly to work it back into shape. Also, don't trust your eyes alone to gauge the work because with all the different colors and shapes going on here, your eyes can deceive you. Trust your hands to tell you where the high and low spots are. Okay, once you have the overall shape where it needs to be, you could stop here and easily be within spec for body filler, but the idea here is to use the smallest amount of filler possible. So, now we're gonna finesse out any little high and low spots with the hammer and dolly. Notice now that the hits are very light and very quick, designed for small movement and planishing of the metal. What you're after is a surface that's gonna require just a thin skim coat of filler, if any. Once again, let your hands be the guide here. Now, once you reach the point where your hands are telling you this is good, you might be surprised because your eye might look at it and go, that's not good enough. That's why you don't trust your eyes. So the last step is we're gonna strip all this old paint off here to show you what we've actually done. One of the best tools to do this is the paint stripping disc that you can find at most hardware stores. It's aggressive enough to remove paint but not cut into the metal. Now keep an eye out for any high and low spots too because now is the time to hammer those out. All right, remember, this is what we started with a little while ago and this is what we have now. Ready for a light skim coat of filler and some paint. Remember, we didn't do any welding, we didn't do any grinding here. All we used was some hammers and some dollies, took a little bit of time and a little bit of blood. <laughs> Something everybody's got. So, don't tell me that you can't pound your own dents out because we've just shown you that you can. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we have been covering some basic body working techniques, showing you how to straighten out some lumpy panels using hammers and dollies. Now, the reason this is important is that once you grasp the techniques of shaping metal, you're gonna be able to fix pretty much any damage you find on a vehicle that's gonna require moving metal, from creases to dents to bullet holes. And if you add to that what we've already shown you about how to deal with rust and how to fabricate and put in replacement panels, you should be able to handle pretty much any surprise that a project's gonna throw at you. However, that brings up a big question. When should you repair a panel and when should you fabricate a new one? That's a really good question. And the answer depends on three things. Number one, how much time and money you intend on spending on the vehicle. Number two, how you're gonna use the vehicle. And number three, what your mindset is as you approach it. For example, this old FC Jeep, if you were gonna do a rat rod or a nostalgia build out of this, well, this bed is perfect. I mean, you put a clear coat on to protect it from more rust and go. Simple, cheap, easy. However, if you wanted to restore this bed back to original condition, and here's what you're looking at. We have some damage in the rolled edge on both sides of the bed. Now this can be fixed by using a slide hammer to pull this out, or you can take an appropriate piece of steel tubing and you can cut out the damaged area in the proper length and weld in a new piece. Pretty simple fix. Speaking of cutting and welding, you see we have some rust holes here in the spare tire area, but the metal is good here, so we have a repair there and a repair there and on back that direction. Speaking of rust, we don't have a lot of big rust holes on the bed, but we do have a fair amount of pinholes all the way down this top edge. Look at all of these. Right there. Then, as we come in on the back side of the stake pocket, we got some rust there. If you look at the other side, the stake pocket is still in good shape, so that's reusable. And then, of course, as you move down the bed, you see more substantial rust holes just sporadically throughout the bed. Then there's just the typical wear and tear and dents and wrinkles that will all need to come out. Now, by themselves, these are no big deal, but when you start adding them all together, 
there's a lot of work here. Now it can all be done, but it's gonna take a lot of time to do all of this stuff. And if it's important for you to keep the original bed and restore it out, that's the kind of work you're looking at. That would be taking the repair it mindset to this sort of a project. Now, if you take a fabricator mindset to this, a quick look at these original bedsides reveals that they started with a single flat panel and then made one, two, three 90 degree bends and then did one 30 degree bend up here at the top. So this would be an easy panel to make on a sheet metal break. Then weld a new piece of tubing on the outer bed side to finish that off. Utilize your stock stake pockets and you've got a new replacement original style bed in half the time that it would take you to fix all of this old damage. So from a time and money standpoint, that would be the best approach to take to repairing this kind of bed if it's not important that you keep the original bed, but you want a stock looking bed. But now let's say you don't necessarily want to stay with a stock look and you want to do something completely different. Well, that would require you to think like a fabricator customizer. <laughs> That's where you take something like this 67 through 72 Ford short bed bedside like we got from LMC and create a custom bed for a 57 Jeep forward control. <laughs> yeah. Now, as you can see, this thing has to be shortened. The wheel opening has to be relocated. Matter of fact, it might be better to use a long bed bedside, but either way, there's a lot of slicing and dicing that has to happen here. But once you're done, you're gonna have something that is completely unique based on the style of bedside you decide to use. This is exactly what we did when we created a custom bed for our old Fico Snowcat using 48 to 52 Ford bedsides from LMC. Now, obviously, taking a customizer approach is gonna take more time and more money and more tools than any of the others. But hopefully this answers the question and it gives you a clearer idea of when to leave things alone, when to repair what you've got, when to fabricate new panels, and when to just toss everything aside and start over. Because remember, with the right tools and the right mindset, anything's possible. Tooltech, brought to you by Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. When it comes to working with sheet metal and building custom panels, we all want the same thing. We want them to look good and we want them to be strong. And there's several ways to do that. From using a bead roller, to unique fasteners and rivets, to the finish that you put on the metal. And most people are familiar with these tools and techniques. But one thing that people are not as familiar with are these dimple holes that not only look cool, but they add strength to the panel. And when we used them on the interior of the Rat Roaster a while back, a lot of people have asked how to get that dimpled look. And just like with anything in the shop, it's all about having the right tools. Take a look. Now, this is a dimple die kit that we got from Woodward Fab. And these dies are made out of hardened steel, so they're gonna cut and last for a long time, and they are gonna give you that cool dimpled hole that you're after in up to 16 gauge steel and 14 gauge aluminum. Now, as you can see, this particular kit has dies ranging from half inch all the way up to a massive three inch. If you need bigger than that, you're on your own. Now, these dies are pretty simple. Basically, they consist of a male and female half. Then you have this cutter that fits in the center, and then you have a through bolt. Here's how it works. Drill a pilot hole in the metal, and then put the lower cutting and shaping die in a vise. It's a good idea to use some cutting oil or anises on the die for easy cutting, especially if you're doing aluminum. Next, set the metal on top and then place the upper die on top and run the through bolt down into the lower die and take out the slack. Take a wrench and just tighten the bolt. The middle cutter will open the center hole to the proper size and the outer dies will make the proper dimple without distorting the panel. And that's it, it really is that simple. 
as long as you have these dies. Because without them, good luck trying to do something like that with any kind of consistency or accuracy. It's impossible. But that's what makes a good tool. It makes the impossible possible. And now, Parts Bin. Everybody knows that fuel injection is a great addition to any engine. And when MSD came out with the atomic EFI a few years ago that bolted in place of a carburetor, people went crazy. However, fuel injection technology is changing almost as fast as your smartphone. And that's why MSD has come out with the Atomic 2 EFI system. Now, just like the original, this is a throttle body injection that's designed to bolt right in place of your carburetor. And as you can see, it's got four 100-pound injectors. It'll flow 850 CFM and will support up to 650 horsepower, which is a lot more than that would do. But the big question is, how is it to tune? And that's what's really cool, because the computer or the ECU is built right into the housing here, so there's no separate mounting of a module, and that ECU controls everything, your ignition timing, your fuel delivery, your fans, and it is self-tuning. So you basically start the vehicle and drive it, and the ECU tunes itself. Now, if you want to tweak, it comes with a touch screen that has your gauges and your setup, so you can tweak all you want. Then, of course, it has all the sensors and the hookups and the hardware and the wiring harnesses that you're going to need to make this thing work. And it's all basically plug-and-play stuff. You only have to hook up four wires, so pretty much anybody can do this. So if you're thinking about getting rid of your carburetor and jumping into the fuel injection game, well, the MSD Atomic 2 is a great great way to do it. If you've been around the hot rod world very much, you know that the Chevy LS engine is the swap king. There's zillions of parts out there to put these in virtually anything. But what if you're a Mopar person and you want to put a modern Hemi into your project? Well, Holly decided to help you out with that and they came out with the Gen 3 Hemi kit. This is designed to bolt a modern Hemi into your late 60s, early 70s Mopar. Now take a look at this. Obviously it starts with motor mounts that bolt right to your factory V8 K member, and then it bolts the engine in in the proper place. You have a transmission cross member that mounts the transmission. Then of course you have a mid sump oil pan so you don't have any clearance issues around the cross member. Now these three things work together to position the engine and transmission properly so there's no clearance issues around the accessories, the drive shaft angle is right, everything. Then of course Holly has other products like headers, exhaust systems, ECUs, if you want to finish the project out. But these three will get it in place for you. So if you're thinking about putting a Hemi into your vehicle and want to get away from the LS, Holly's got the products to make that happen. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Alan from Indiana, and Alan's project is a golf cart. But Alan's not the one that owns it. No, the one that owns it is his son. But his son's not the one working on it. The one working on it is his grandson, Cole. Cole is eight years old, and take a look at this. Cole has disassembled this golf cart. He has stripped the body. He has prepped it for paint. He masked off the entire thing, and he painted it with rattle cans and he's eight years old. How cool is that? And of course, Grandpa is right there encouraging the whole time. Now, he says that Cole spends all of his time watching videos, <laughs> how-to videos. He doesn't play games like most kids does. He's sitting there watching how-to videos about everything, how to do concrete, how to work metal, how to work on cars. He's just into it. That's awesome. And he says that he actually has a Mustang that Cole called him on the other day after watching the video and says, Grandpa, you need to change your exhaust so your car sounds better. <laughs> that is awesome. And he has the best quote here. The grandfather says, 
I've been a gearhead for 50 years and the apple has not fallen too far from the tree. Matter of fact, I'm not sure it fell off at all. <laughs> That's the quote of the day. I love it. So to recognize that, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab and we're gonna give you one of these tubing notchers because eventually Cole is gonna wanna notch tubing and he's gonna wanna weld it together and he's gonna wanna fabricate. Also, we're gonna give him a V8 Interceptor shirt so he has one of those cars on there that he can wear around. And we're gonna give him a project planning book because he may not have a project yet, but he is gonna get one and this book will help keep him on track. We're also gonna give him a gift card from Holly so he can get some parts there to go on that project he's gonna get. And then we're gonna give him one of these Sergeant Rock die casts. So hopefully that'll give him some incentive that one day maybe something he builds will become a die cast. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, get your project featured on the show, man, you got to send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into what you're working on. The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation so you can stream any of our episodes commercial free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime where you can watch past and current seasons of Gears and check out our new show, Stacy David's Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes footage of our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Hopefully this inspires you to get out there and start working on something. Who'd have thought that a golf cart could be so cool? All right, get out there, start working on something. We'll see you next time.